Hello students and welcome to the e-learning program initiated by Sri Gyan Manji Vidyapit for the students of standard 9 in which we are doing quick revision uh, just before the final exams. Students in quick revision will have a very quick revision for all the chapters that are included from the main book that is Beehive all the poems that are included in the syllabus for uh, final exams and all the chapters that are included for the final exams uh, from the second book that is supplementary reading it is moments now we already know and we are already aware in the last lecture we already discussed about the reduced syllabus which chapters are included which chapters are excluded let us have a quick review of that also syllabus that is included for the final exams so that is included in the chapters included uh, one chapter number from behind chapter number one two three four students I, I hope that we are uh, sitting with the uh, two parts of the material that we have sm1 and sm2 and you are with the index so that you particularly note down which chapters are included and which chapters are not going to be asked that means they are reduced from the syllabus Chapter number 1, 2, 3, 4 from the main book we have there included. Chapter number 5 is not there. Then 6, 7, 8, 9 is included. 10 is not there. Then chapter number 11. So in we have, we have 9 chapters that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 11. In poems we have one, poem number 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. 5, 6 and 8, 9 right and in the uh, supplementary reading that is moments we have only the first 5 chapters that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 rest of the chapters have been reduced for this year's syllabus now in the previous lecture we had done uh, the quick revision for chapter number 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7 and 8 9 and 11 will be starting from this lecture onwards now chapter number nine name of the chapter is the bond of love it is written by Kenneth Anderson we, I have written the number of the chapter the name of the chapter and the author of the chapter students when we are writing answers many times I have said that your answer should begin with either the name of the chapter or the author but both these things should be included in each and every answer of yours what happens is when we are talking about s7 suppose s7 then s7 term 1 is there in term 1 half of the syllabus will be there right when i'm talking about uh, final exams your complete book is there okay this time because of covid we have some reduced syllabus otherwise full complete syllabus is there there is no reduction in of any type when final exams are concerned both uh, the main book and the supplementary reading complete chapters complete poems are asked right so you are given five six questions out of there you have to somewhere write four uh, questions somewhere you have to write five questions yes if you are talking about the main book then four five questions you have to answer that is the two two marks each that means ten marks are dedicated for question answers of uh, from the main book that is we have now what happens is five uh, questions they will be from five different chapters that you have selected suppose we are talking about even this year then uh, again five questions are there but on the whole you are given seven questions yes from seven questions you have to answer five so they will be from different chapter now you write the number correct accurate number suppose we are dealing with question number uh, five or six or eight whatever that is right if I'm talking about question number eight then question number eight whatever that question is we don't have to write the question we have to write the answer right so you write the correct number of the question question number eight and then your answer if it starts from suppose the, it is this question then if the answer starts with in the story the bond of love the bond of love should be in single inverted quote the author k 
Kenneth Anderson, and then you complete your answer. When the examiner reads it, he knows, he at least comes to know that this student knows from which, everybody knows, right? It's not uh, anything surprising or everybody knows. But when we add that, the examiner is satisfied that this person knows the name of the chapter and the author of the chapter. That is an additional information for him to give you marks, right? So your answer should always start with the name of the chapter and the author or the author and then the name of chapter in that the author this or in that story this happens and this is the answer of the story that way now the bond of love written by kenneth anderson here kenneth anderson is himself narrating the story and that is quite a long story abridged that means cut short and given you as a chapter right we know in the story the uh, author Kenneth Anderson is passing through some of the sugarcane fields right and uh, there the people uh, they are chasing away uh, the wild hogs that is bear, um, boar or you can say pigs wild pigs from the sugarcane fields that have come from the nearby jungle they are driving them away by firing shots at them that is from rifles most of the fig, uh, pigs they have ran away from the field but when the commotion is over, something black rushes out from the screen, uh, from the field, and one of the friend of Kenneth Anderson, he he is not frightened or so, but involuntarily, uh, without any real purpose, uh, just pulls the trigger, and that black thing, which was running towards them, it slows down, stops, falls down, and it's dead. When it is dead, after a short while, something black on that black thing moves and separates itself then they realize that this is not a pig it's a it's a it's a sloth bear and that sloth bear is a mother sloth bear from with the from which the baby bear has separated because the baby bear was riding on the sloth the mother was running away from the uh, shots fired from the rifle was terrified and was running away and trying to save the baby and she got killed right so the author sees the little baby bear uh, running round and round trying to wake up the mother and crying out loudly yeah, this is the scenario opening scenario right the uh, author gets hold of the bear and baby bear and they put it in a sack and that is presented as a gift to the author's uh, wife, the author presents that cub and the wife is very much happy to receive that baby bear or the cub and because all animals when they are young ones they look so cute right automatically people start loving them so uh, here to see the main thing that the author wants to point out is the cub had just lost, uh, lost its mother and the author's wife supplements as a mother because after all the wife is a woman and a mother of children right so she easily understands the cub's situation and the si and the situation warrants that the cub should be given real love so that starts uh, it stops remembering its mother and uh, gets quite friendly with the family and that is exactly what happens right uh, the baby bear learns how to drink milk from a bottle starting from there and within a few days eats whatever is available then there are lots of incidences which happen yes uh, one time uh, uh, it uh, drank uh, sorry, it ate the poison uh, barium carbonate which was kept for the rats which had entered the library and uh, the sloth bear is always trying to find some uh, food so it ate that poison and suddenly fall, uh, fell ill because of the uh, spreading of the poison and uh, the bear was able to drag itself it wasn't able to call but then it was able to drag itself reach the kitchen and uh, 
the wife uh, saw the condition and immediately called the husband husband immediately understood what the situation is is that this is poison and uh, rushed the uh, cup to the nearest vet and uh, the vet uh, found out because he also didn't treat sloth bear usually so he had to find out what's wrong and what effects will the barium carbonate do on uh, a cup and the Uh, respective medicine uh, sorry uh, injection was given uh, antidote was given and uh, within a short time the baby bear recovered from it and uh, that was one of the episode another episode is uh, the ng doll which was kept to uh, k- kill the termites whole liter of that or whatever fill was there and uh, they drank all of that but nothing happened right so these are some of the incidents and the sloth bear grows bigger and bigger and the uh, bear is now about the height of the alsatians that are kept and uh, the nearby children uh, living li- uh, nearby the neighbors children and all that right he, he is having ha- he has grown up to certain height and now it's quite dangerous so he, they have to keep him in chains and all that and they don't like it and to keep a wild animal like that so friends and family uh, they suggest that the bear should not be kept at home it's a wild animal and it's very safe in the zoo you don't um, um, release the animal in the jungle uh, perhaps it might not be able to survive because it has lived with humans uh, right from the beginning so a zoo is a quite a safe place and your baby will be safe you can go whenever you want to see him and that is how the bear after lots of frustration uh, reaches the uh, zoo but on both the side that is love the bond of love the mother that is the author's wife and the cub they spent whole of their time together and they were attached with each other with that bond of love the wife treated the cub like a small child and the bear saw a motherly figure in the human being so that bond of love does not allow them to remain separate for quite a long time the author's wife becomes desperate to see the uh, cub and very fondly kept the name uh, uh, bruno but later on changed to baba and it's an affectionate word um, for a small child in uh, our local language that is hindustan language and uh, the bear also there the bear is not uh, having food or not feeling anything to eat or drink same way here also the wife is frustrating she is also not eating properly very desperate to see so after three months she goes over there and both of them sit for the whole of the day the bear inside the cage the wife outside the cage yes and the wife has brought lots and lots of things author's wife has brought lots of food stuff for the bear and keeps on uh giving that food to bruno or baba and baba enjoys um the meeting thoroughly he is very happy to see his mother yes and this way they spend the time together but when it is parting time separating time right the wife is very adamant that she wants the baba back tells the curator about that the curator says that if the superintendent of the zoo gives them the permission he will be very glad to release the animal so they go to the superintendent who is in another town and please remember the names of the towns where the uh, zoo is where the superintendent is it will help you in answering and in this way the superintendent is also convinced that both of them cannot re- live separately and uh, the uh, cub will be properly now it's uh, almost uh, a fully grown bear but it will be taken care it won't harm anyone after all the assurance the superintendent gives the permission so in a cage on top of the car bruno arrives home certain arrangements are made so that uh, bruno can live freely without hurting anyone right so in this way whole of the story that is the bond of love can there be friendship between human beings and wild animals and let's read the fascinating account that is the complete story of an orphan disloyal bear that was re- uh, re- uh, rescued by the author and the bear gets a new life living with the human beings yes and was quite fascinatingly attached with the uh, author's wife because in her she um, the bear uh, uh, so a motherly figure so 
he was very much attached with the uh, wife of the author and both of them they were quite easy going that relationship though it's a wild animal and a human being but the relation was so easy going and accepted by both and the world that is the main thing the world around them the people they also accepted that thing now please remember the name of the characters again author is Kenneth Anderson he is the narrator over here curator uh, of course wife is the center figure in this uh, chapter Bruno is the center figure same way wife is also the center figure curator we have few dialogues right then so pretend again we have few dialogues and the center figure that is Bruno or Baba is or the baby bear sloth cub um, um, baby sloth bear cub uh, so please remember all the uh, characters that are in the uh, in the story and we we are answer accordingly next chapter we have is 10 is not there chapter number 11 is there if i were you douglas james again here uh, it's a uh, it's a drama over here right uh, the last chapter chapter number 11 it's a drama and there are only two characters one is uh, the author himself yes uh, and that is Douglas James, he is the narrator over here or he is the main character over here and the intruder. These are the only two people. Yes, can there be... No, this has been... So, in this chapter, uh, there is a play and we have two characters in this drama. One is Gerard, he is the narrator himself uh, by the name yes uh, Gerard and the intruder yes the main character is Gerard and the other one is intruder yes in the opening scene we see Gerard he is busy packing and at the same time we see the intruder quietly arriving in his room with a gun in his hand and when he starts speaking to Gerard Gerard turns but he is quiet a cool and calm person he doesn't get afraid of the gun throughout the drama that's a very good point and that of course makes the other person frustrated the narrator is quite witty he is having a very good presence of mind cool and calm posture throughout the uh, drama and he effectively wraps the intruder in his plot in his words and saves himself not only saves himself but is able to control the situation throughout the plot we can see that the uh, intruder has come with a purpose over here in Gerard's house he wants to take the identity of Gerard now how will he take the identity of Gerard yes both of them are similar in looks uh, in built in uh, the face looks similar only his practical is missing otherwise both of them look quite uh, fair enough that they uh, they could uh, look quite similar yes in build face etc so the intruder wants to kill Gerard once Gerard is killed once the body is disposed he can start living as Gerard because he finds out that uh, Gerard lives in this place but nobody knows what Gerard is doing, what he is, where is he working, yes, what is his source of income. He seems like a ghost, comes any any time in the town, goes away from town, where he goes, why he goes, nobody knows that. He doesn't come to town for shopping, whatever he wants, he just gives a call and gets everything at home, right? So nobody knows this mysterious person called Gerard and that is what the intruder wants because the intruder is a uh, jewel, jewelry thief, a uh, uh, jewel thief, and he has done a job in town somewhere. And uh, the the robbery, something went wrong, and the police was chasing him, and he had to kill a policeman to run away from this situation. Now, whole of the police department is after him because he killed the policeman and he has come to this town for Gerard some two people talking about Gerard that this is a mysterious person and so the intruder made a plot to go to Gerard's house kill him dispose of the body and become Gerard but now because he is Gerard looking like Gerard so nobody will doubt him the police does not want Gerard because they want the jewel thief so they are not going to stop Gerard anyway they are not going to come and inquire after Gerard nothing is going to happen and the intruder will easily take the identity of Gerard and start living as Gerard then he doesn't worry about have to worry about the police 
so this is what the plan is what the interviewer thinks but gerard makes that quite a difficult yes he keeps on talking with uh, the interviewer yes making him upset yes wrapping up in his words and trying to uh, show his wittiness his readiness of answers yes and by the time he gets enough time to uh, frame up something in which he can trap the intruder and at the end we see that the intruder is trapped in the words of gerard and gerard uh, makes him believe that he is also not a simple humble god fearing law abiding citizen he is also that means gerard is also a criminal wanted by the police and he convinces that both of them should run away now because at any moment the police is going to arrive if he does not get caught as intruder then he will certainly be get caught as uh, get caught as gerard and he will be punished by hanging now the intruder becomes quite terrified because he came over here to take the identity of gerard and live over here now he finds himself in trouble because if he starts living as gerard then the police is going to come after gerard because gerard is also a criminal and so he will get caught as gerard and get punished for the crimes of gerard so he is convinced by the by the main character that is gerard that i am not a simple man i am also a criminal like you though gerard is not but he very efficiently in his words trap the intruder and makes him believe that he is also a criminal and at the end we see that uh, the intruder is pushed into a cupboard and his gun is knocked off and the and gerard locks him up in a cupboard and calls a friend and asks him to uh, come to his house with the uh, police officer with him yes so sharif with him and that is the head of the police department of that particular small town right and this is how gerard is efficiently working over here each and every moment how to trap the intruder right so in this way this is the whole uh, story of uh, if i were you and wherever the question is asked if you are thoroughly aware of all the uh, situations in the uh, whole of the drama and that also sequence wise you got to remember lots of things yes especially the dialogues spoken by the introder the uh, the main character that is gerard yes we should re thoroughly read the uh, chapter so as to answer whatever questions are posed before us so students with this we uh, had a quick revision of all the chapters that are included from the main book that is we have uh, chapter number 5 is not there chapter number 10 is not there all the remaining chapters from 1 to 11 except 5 and 10 yes they should be read thoroughly question answers should be done thoroughly you have your wrt papers each and every uh, wrt paper has some questions in it you should try to answer it right and this way you should prepare yourself thoroughly for the final examinations now students will start with the poems all the poems that are included for the purpose of final exams question answers will be asked uh, comprehension of poems will be asked for two marks you have to answer the questions given at the end of the stanza or two three lines that are given to you figures of speech will be asked question answers will be asked so uh, let us go through all the poems very quickly we'll start with poem number 1 the road not taken we'll be doing two things in the poems will be doing the summary and we'll be doing the figures of speech now poem number 1 the road not taken it's written by 
Robert Lee Frost. Now, summary it is already given in your material, but then we'll go through it. The road not taken. We know the poem, we have read the poem, and for you it is compulsory to read the poem at least 10, 10 times so that you are aware of each and every word that is there in each and every line of the poem, each and every stanza. Right? You should be knowing the poem thoroughly so that you understand it. Then come to summary, then come to a few of the question answers that are given to you. We have done lots of assignments during the whole year. Right? So, uh, better keep those things books ready. Yes, it's part of the fair book that we did. Right? Now, summary. Now, uh, the road not taken, the poet is going through the woods, a small jungle, right? And he uh, is, he has taken a small road. Yes, he has to stop because now the road is diverging into two. So he is standing at the junction at the point where the road is dividing itself into two. Yes, he takes a look at both the roads properly. He has to decide which road he must take. So he takes quite a lot of time observing road number one and road number two. Road number one is thoroughly used road where usually in those days what was the transport? Horses and carriages. So they are constantly plying on that road. Uh, travelers keep on going uh, to and fro on that road so that the road is well used. When the road in the jungle especially when it is very well used, grass doesn't get time to grow over there on the road because people are constantly moving, vehicles are constantly moving. Then he takes look at the second road, there he finds grass and small small plants coming up right on the road because that road is less traveled. Now he has to decide which road he must take. The first road, for example, if he takes the first road then it is very clear because people use it constantly. That means the road is quite safe. It is safer to travel on that road because People have faith on that road, it's quite safe and that is why people are using it. On the other hand, people have stopped using the uh, other road. Yes, and because people are not using it, that is why grass and small plants have grown on it. Now, like any common person, if he takes the first road, then there is no challenge in it. Yes, the poet we observe is quite uh, a person who likes challenges, so he chooses the second road which is less traveled and that is going to make a difference. He does not know what lies ahead in on that road, what challenges he has to face. Now this poem is very effectively, effectively paralleled with our life. In our life also we come to a juncture, we come to a point where we have to decide which path we should take. right? If we take, uh, for your example, students, yes, at one point in time you have to decide which path you have to take, right? And once you are on that path, there is no coming back. You'll hardly again come back to that same point and again take the other road. Usually we don't do that. There is no thing like coming back to take the other road, right? So, whenever we, in our life, we reach a spot, where we have to take decision, yes, then we should give, take the decision after giving lots of thought. We shouldn't take the decision haphazardly. Yes, we should thoroughly consider the consequences and then take the decision. So, in the this poem has parallels, right? So, that is what we are. Now, now what is the summary? One day the poet traveling all alone reaches a point where the road divides into two. He faces the situation of uncertainty. You don't know. Yes, if you road, take this road, what's going to happen in future? If you take this road, what's lying over there ahead in the on the road and what's going to happen to you? It's un uncertain. He thinks which road he should take to continue his journey. He gives a careful thought which path he should follow. Then he decides to uh, and he chooses the road which seems to be less traveled. He, why? Here comes the answer. He feels that it will make a big difference in his future. Though he might never get a chance to again come back at that point and take the other road. Try to take the other road. The poet makes a very difficult decision. The poet feels that ages from now, he would be telling this decision to 
with other people and that's going to be a relief for him he would tell them how less frequent road he traveled upon has made the all the difference and whatever he is today it is because of that decision taken on that day which path to choose that has made all the difference yes many times in the in the future we look back to our past and we real, we realize that that decision which which was taken on that day was wrong and because i took a wrong decision i am facing this trouble uh, opposite side we are very happy when we look back into our past and say that was the point when i had to take a decision i chose a difficult path for me though all the difficulties i faced today whatever i am it is because of that day when i made the choice so whole of the poem is upon choice that you take at difficult junctures in life the last two lines have the essence of the poem the poet expresses his opinion that it becomes difficult for a normal human being to change his or her decision the poet intends to walk on the first road but he couldn't do so because life does not offer multiple chances to lose he has to make a choice and that choice comes only one time yes the decision taken may ruin one's future or lead one to success both of them are present over there it's a matter of choice that you make it makes all the difference he now repents for not getting a chance to travel on the repents he feels sorry yes and miserable that when two roads were there i should get two chances one to go in future yeah on that road and again come back and then take the other road but that thing doesn't happen in real life when we take a path we have to follow that path of whatever difficulty we have to face it and at the end we might become success or we might face failure right so it depends upon the choice that we make figure out speech two roads diverge into a yellow wood metaphor wood wood man's life and wood same thing yes in our life we also have to make a choice we have two three paths in front of us we have to make a correct choice so that wood stands for not the wood that we have right lakdi nahi it means a jungle same way our life is just like a jungle right metonymy represents choice two roads diverged here that divergence is the point where you make a decision so metonymy is that that decision making the chance that is there right that is presented over here as two roads is yes, that are diverging so it's metonymy over here and sorry i could not travel both not is there so automatically litot it's there because negation is used and be one traveler long i stood and looked down one as far as i could now we have to combine these two lines yes if we combine these two lines we have one and one complete word is repeated so we have repetition and if we see the words at the end of each and every line then stood and could they make internal rhyme within these two lines it's rhyming word stood could having the same sound so internal ir stands for internal rank so two figures of speech are there in this form in this two lines if clubbed together to where it bent in the undergrowth only one line is there now to where it it represents the road yes it is used for the you know, that's a pronoun that is used now road is bending we can bend animals can bend birds can bend but road can bend yes so the road is given the human quality of bending and that is why it is personification is road is given the human quality of bending this personification figure of speech is used in this line then took the other just as fair and having perhaps the better claim now two figures of speech is their personification road is given the human quality of being fair yes we can be fair hum gore kale ki baat nahi kar rahe yes black and fair skin no we are not fair means good fair means good now human beings are good yes we fair we are fair we are just yes roads are not so the road is given the 
human quality of being fair and that is why personification it is personified even the human quality so personification is there with the word fair next is hyperbole road has a better claim we as human being we have a better claim right this boy is better than this boy this boy is intelligent than this boy this girl is more better far more better than this boy or this girl so we have a better claim roads cannot have a better claim yes that's an inanimate object right non living thing so hyperbole it's an overstatement because it was grassy and wanted wear now if it is grassy that means you got to walk upon it constantly so that wear and tear is there and on the road grass is not there tautology grassy and wanted wear both the opposite also if it is grassy it is not worn but because it is grassy it wants wear so grassy and want wear both of these words mean the same so two words having the same meaning are used over here unnecessarily so it is tautology though as far for that the passing there only one line is there metonym is there the traveler passing there who passes the travelers pass over there but the word used over here is the passing yes now we are not objects we are living thing right so metonymy we are given the name of the passers right so that is metonymy an attribute is given traveler alliteration is there har do do is there that do is there the the is there there the so the consonant sound the is repeated four times so it is alliteration next line had worn them really about the same alliteration is there now where is the alliteration again the the is used yes the same consonant sound is there one is in them one is in the so alliteration is present in this line and both that morning lay in leaves no step had trodden black the first one is anastrophe anastrophe is over here and both that morning lay and both lay that morning or both lay equally that morning in leaves no step had now no step had should come in the front but the words are disarranged to give some poetic effect so that is where anastrophe comes inversion for the effect next is litots no step negation is used so litots is automatically there oh i kept the first for another day exclamation mark is there and interjection word that is oh sudden expression of feeling that is there so explanation is automatically there students keep in mind that even when interjection word is given comma is given and full stop is used in instead of exclamation then also exclamation figure of speech will be there because an interjection word is used yes poets have the liberty to change the way a language is presented so they might not keep an exclamation mark right but we have to understand that interjection word is used over here so exclamation is already there yet knowing how way leads to way one way leads to many ways yes we are on a road we come upon a cross road four roads are there we find the road diverging to three different directions again whichever road we take again diverges so way leads the way but way is written two times so repetition is there if we take the end of the word and uh, end word of each and uh, both the lines then we find rhyming over there with day and way so internal rhyme in if these two lines are combined together then we have beautiful three figures of speech over here i shalling i shall be telling this with a sigh sigh is sound word anomotopia sigh is whenever you breathe out regretting something feeling sorry for something then you don't need any word that action itself the sound itself of huge volume of air coming out of your body that shows the regret it becomes a sound so that sound of sighing that is 
sound word onomatopoeia is used over here somewhere ages and ages and what is ages and ages you don't live for 1000 10000 years what is ages right we just live for 50 60 70 80 90 100 years yes so ages and ages that is whole of the word is repeated twice so repetition is the word used over here it's also a hyperbole if we count it otherwise no i took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference epigram pointed statement but reveals a deep meaning reached his goal right what is the meaning of these two lines yes there were lots of difficulties in the path but at the end i got success same thing i took the road which was less traveled by and today whatever i am that has made the difference i choose the less traveled road and today i am successful because i made a good choice that day so that means success he reached his goal so it's epigram a pointed saying is over here yes it which means something else so with this we uh, complete our today's uh, lecture and in the third lecture will be uh, continuing with the rest of the figures of speech and uh, the five chapters that are included in the from the Uh, supplementary reader that is moments the next poem that we are going to do is poem number 2 name of the poem is wind it is written by subramanya bharti subramanya bharti is a very great tamil poet famous for his patriotism in the pre independence era he's written lots of patriotic uh, poems to encourage the uh, freedom fighters will be learning the summary first and then the figures of speech now whole of the poem is in a continuous form without any paragraph uh, sorry stanzas the first part of the poem describes the action of the wind what is done by the wind lots of destruction is done by the wind even uh, not that much velocity as a storm but wind coming with a force also disrupts lots of things yes so that is what the poet is describing the poet asked the wind to come slowly because he requests that if it comes very strongly or with force then it will be breaking the shutters of the windows uh, the poet is doing his work on the table lots of papers are there wind comes in all of a sudden and with strong force and uh scatters the paper here and down if it has force then the books that are on the shelf yes uh, it is able to uh bring or throw down those books from the shelf also it is is having quite a lot of force but the wind throws the books and tears the pages the wind does not listen to the poet and it comes with force and it breaks the shutters of the window at the same time it uh scatters all the papers that are on the table and it throws down the books from the shelf the poet says that the wind it is known for mocking weaklings people who are weak is things which are weak because the wind has strength and whatever has strength tries to show its strength upon the weaklings so if an old man is walking on the road yes a strong gush of wind is going to throw him off balance same way we have seen a sudden gush of wind and a small poor little child yes cycling paddling very hard yes all of a sudden is thrown off balance and falls down on the road because of the wind so the wind is known for mocking that is making fun of weaklings but the wind tries to fight as much but the opponent is strong then wind it doesn't harm them that is it it brings down frail houses weak houses it brings down with the wind it crumbles doors which are not strong enough rafters and even weak hearts yes it crushes everything that is weak but the poet advises us to be strong because only then we can save ourselves from the wind and we should build strong houses we should have strong doors windows 
from those our body and hearts also should be quite strong it is the way of the world to kick the weak and be friends with the strong this is a very good thing written by the poet now let us concentrate upon the figures of speech now the very first line wind comes softly now uh, wind is not a living thing right uh, uh, right so the poet is addressing directly to directly to any inanimate object so apostrophe is there which means that a direct address has been made to wind which is an no, which is a non living thing next don't break the shutters of the window if it is don't negation is used automatically little uh, is there apostrophe is already there throughout the poem will have apostrophe because a direct address is being made to win which is an inanimate object so apostrophe is there litots is there windows in this line is part of the house so part of the whole that is why cynic doc is there don't scatter the papers negation is there so litots has to be there plus don't scatter the papers it is telling uh, the poet is telling to the wind so a direct address is made so to the inanimate non living thing so apostrophe is there next line don't throw down the books on the shelf don't is there so litots is there don't throw that means a direct address to the wind apostrophe is there alliteration repetition of the consonant sound is there yes you can say repetition is also there because whole of the word the and the is repeated over here don't and down so the consonant sound do is repeated over here so alliteration is there there look what you did you threw them down now you is repeated two times over here so repetition is there there look what you did a direct address is made to the wind so apostrophe is there you tore the pages again you direct address is made so apostrophe is already there pages of the books books is the whole page is part of it so part of the whole cynic doc is present over here you brought the rain again you direct address to the wind so apostrophe is already there rain again there is internal rhyme in the same line so ir ir stands for internal line so there are two figures of speech over here you are very clever at poking fun at weaklings students remember there are one two three and four figures of speech in a single line now you are very clever you so direct address is made to the wind which is inanimate or living thing non living thing so apostrophe is already there now clever is also there and weakling is also there clever and weakling they are two opposite words used in the same line but a number of words are separating them so it is not oxymoron it is antithesis personification the wind has the ability of making fun or poking fun at weakling which is a human quality so personification is there alliteration you will find lots of consonant sounds which are present over here frail crumbling houses crumbling doors now crumbling crumbling two times is there so repetition is already there frail and crumbling frail and crumbling both of them are different words having the same meaning now if it is frail it is weak if it is crumbling crumbling can happen only when it is weak so two different words are used which has the same meaning so tautology which means two or more than two words are used for the sake of poetic effect but it has the same meaning so frail and crumbling both of them have the same meaning now next line it's divided right so in the book also in the material also in that poem you will have to divide the lines which has near about the uh, same meaning crumbling rafters crumbling wood now crumbling is already there two times so repetition is already there now rafters and wood rafters and wood 
both of them they are same because a rafter is made out of wood wood is wood right so two words are there having same meaning so tautology is used repetition is there crumbling bodies crumbling lives crumbling hearts whole of these three six words are to be taken as one line now repetition is there crumbling 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 at the same time internal rhyme is also there bodies lives hearts now body it means people right at the same time lives also stand for people hearts heart part of the whole so cynic talk is there the wind god winnows and crushes them all wind god yes personification wind is personified having the human quality of crushing them all right so personification is there alliteration win win knows w w uh, v word uh, the v uh, sound is repeated consonant sound is repeated so alliteration is present over here he won't know now up till here was what wind does yes now he, the poet changes the topic a, li a little bit he won't do what you tell him to do won't is there so automatically litots is already there he won't do what you tell him the wind does not listen to us it is an inanimate thing but it is personified over here as if it listens so personification is present alliteration won't what you have lots of them next so come let's build strong homes let's join the doors firmly these two lines are to be taken to together then we have let's and let's repetition so repetition is there cynic dog doors doors part of the whole house so part of the whole cynic dog is present over here practice to form the body it's not about a single body it is not about a single human being it means people right so here body represents people so part of the whole society so cynic dog is used make the heart uh, make the heart steed fast yes heart part of the whole body so cynic dog is present over here do this and the wind will be friends with us wind is already an inanimate object and it has the quality of making friends so personification is there alliteration is there when will yes the the is there so alliteration is found in plenty the wind blows out weak fires right so wind and weak it has alliteration the wind is given the human quality of blowing the fire or extinguishing the fire so personification is there he makes strong fires roar and flourish now roar and flourish has the same meaning but two different words are there so tautology is there alliteration fire ff is there right so alliteration is there personification it has the quality given the human quality of flourishing developing so personification is there his friendship is good yes first of all it is given the human quality of making friendship so personification is there we praise him every day as when is a living thing so again personification is there 